There are two kinds of fat that are essential in human nutrition. One of them, uh, one, one type of fat that's essential is called omega-3 fat. Omega-3 is represented by linoleic acid. I'm sorry, did I say, I'm sorry, omega-6, I meant, did I say omega-3? Omega-6. Omega-6 is essential to human nutrition because this, this type of fat cannot be produced in the human body, must be obtained from the diet. A representative example of omega-6 essential fat is linoleic acid. Uh, the other type of essential fat is omega-3 fatty acids. Now, the omega-3 fatty acids are a little bit more complicated because if you look at the uh, what is considered the essential omega-3 fatty acid, the one that's usually listed is called alpha-linoleic acid. Now, alpha-linoleic, let's call it ALA. <laughs> ALA is an essential fatty acid, and it's essential because it's an omega-3 fatty acid. However, it, what it really is, it's a precursor for the bioactive, the much more active omega-3 fatty acids, which are EPA and DHA. Now, the problem with alpha-linoleic acid is that only uh, about, depending on which textbook you look at, only about uh, 2% of ALA is able to convert into DHA. Uh, women can convert up to 6 to 8%, even up to 10%. But the conversion rate of ALA into DHA and EPA is very low. So ALA is not the best source of omega-3 fatty acids. Uh, the reason why, in case you're wondering why, they list ALA as an essential omega-3 rather than EPA and DHA is because ALA is found in a lot more foods. It's, it's in a lot of foods. It's all over the place. It's in grains. It's in fruits and vegetables. It's everywhere. Whereas omega-3, the preformed omega-3, the only reliable source of that is fatty fish, halibut, salmon, mackerel, and uh, uh, what else? Uh, I can't even think of it. Sardines. Fatty fish is the only reliable source of omega-3. So because of that, the government officials, in all their wisdom, listed ALA as the uh, essential omega-3 fatty acid. But the truth is, if you depend on ALA as your source of omega-3, you could actually get in trouble because it's not, as I said, it's not converted to the active forms very well. Now, the, the, the problem with omega-6 and omega-3 is related to balance. And those, both of these types of fat are essential, but the problem is that omega-6 is found much more, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, easily in foods compared to omega-3. As I said, omega-3 really, uh, the, the preform, the active form, is only is limited to fatty fish, whereas omega-3 is in a lot of different foods. So it's it, what happens is most people get an abundance of omega-3 they get sometimes 20 times more omega-6, I'm sorry, omega-6 than omega-3, and that kind of creates an imbalance. Uh, now, some scientists think that an excess of omega-3 fatty acids are in pro-inflammatory, meaning it stimulates infla inflammation in the body. The reason for that is omega-6 is the precursor for arachidonic acid, which is also an omega-6, arachidonic acid a fat, is a fatty acid that's converted by enzymes into various types of fat-like chemicals called prostaglandins and eicosanoids, many of which are inflammatory. Some of them are anti-inflammatory, but a lot of them are inflammatory. So from that, scientists developed the idea that omega-6 uh, tends to be very pro-inflammatory. Uh, pro the truth of the matter is that's greatly excite, uh, exaggerated. I'm going to be discussing this in an upcoming article <clears throat> in my Applied Metabolics showing why omega-6, meaning the inflammatory effects have been greatly, greatly exaggerated. But as far as omega-3, omega-3 is, is anti-inflammatory or neutral inflammatory meaning it takes, uh, rather than producing inflammatory prostaglandins and eicosanoids, it produces so-called neutral uh, uh, prostaglandins, meaning they have no effect. They're not, they're not anti-inflammatory or pro-inflammatory. They have no effect on, on inflammation. So theoretically, the best way, if you're interested in health, is to balance your omega-3 
with omega-6 where you get not, uh, you know, if, if you get uh, too much omega-3 without, and you know, if, let's say you were to cut out omega-6 completely and you, and you get an abundance of omega-3, that can cause problems also. Uh, you know, and a lot of people that know the uh, or are familiar with the nutritional benefits of omega-3, they tend to eat, uh, consume a lot of, let's say, fish oil supplements, and they minimize their omega-6. They can get in trouble too. Uh, so the, um, the, uh, the the ratio today between omega-6 and omega-3 for most people is 16 to 1. But human beings were said to evolve a, a ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 of 1 to 1, which would be uh, a little bit uh, healthier. Uh, the, one of the reasons why people get too much omega-6 is because of the preponderance of various seed and vegetable oils, which are very high in omega-6. They're loaded with it. Uh, and, uh, you know, these vegetable oils didn't even really appear until about 100 years ago. And uh, as a result, uh, the human body hasn't really genetically adapted to this huge intake of omega-6 and they wind up getting too much omega-6 which can cause a certain amount of inflammation and various diseases related to inflammation. So, uh, you know, you, you have to be careful that uh, you, you want to control your intake of vegetable oil. Uh, certain types of vegetable oil are, um, are, are, are higher in uh, the omega-6 than others. Uh, for example, um, and others, uh, uh, let's say uh, coconut oil, palm oil, and olive oil are l rel relatively low in omega-6. The vegetable oils that are richest in omega-6 are sunflower, corn, soybean, and cottonseed oils. So uh, these oils should be consumed minimally, minimally. Try to consume as little as possible. Because as I said, unless, especially if you don't eat fish, fatty fish, or you take, or you don't take a fish oil supplement. Uh, if you eat a lot of these vegetable oils, you can get in some trouble. You will get increased inflammation, although not to the extent that some people lead you to believe. But it's not good for you to have excess amounts of omega six. Uh, it could be related to increased rates of cancer and other diseases. So, uh, as I said, the uh, the the food, the best source of omega three is uh, is basically uh, fatty fish. Uh, there's omega-3 enriched eggs. Uh, Alpha-linolenic alpha acid is found in stuff like flax and chia seeds. But as I said, the human body's inefficient at converting ALA into the active forms of EPA and DHA. So uh, I still think that you should uh, basically uh, focus on fatty fish. If you don't want to eat fatty fish, then uh, take a fish oil supplement. The type of fish oil supplement I always recommend is the liquid fish oil supplements. Liquid uh, fish oil does come in capsules, but you would have to take uh, probably 10 or 15 capsules to equal just a tablespoon of liquid fish oil. Now, some, re uh, some recent research, uh, fish oil has an uh, interesting effect, by the way. Omega-3, uh, in older people, it seems to promote muscle gains, uh, but it doesn't in younger people. And the reason for that is older people, as you age, you, there's, a, there's a gradual increase in systemic inflammation. Uh, whether this is due to too much omega-6 or other factors is not really clear. But the point is there is an increase in systemic inflammation. Systemic inflammation blocks muscle gains and also promotes muscle catab catabolism or breakdown. Omega-3 will actually, as I said, lower systemic uh, inflammation. And because older people have higher rates of systemic inflammation, when they take uh, omega-3 by lowering the systemic inflammation, they get more muscle gains. And, and this systemic inflammation is not a major factor in those who are younger. So those people who are under 40 who use fish oil, now if you want to take fish oil for health, that's fine, but it's not going to cause any muscle gains. If you're under 40, it, it won't, but it, it will if you... Uh, use it as if you're over 40, especially in conjunction with a f sufficient protein intake and resistance exercise. So what else can I say? Oh, there is a um, uh, one warning about, uh, about uh, fish oil supplements uh, is that uh, some recent study, I believe there's about six studies that came out showing that uh, taking large amounts of omega-3 as fish oil increase the risk of a heart problem called atrial fibrillation by 33%. And this is uh, quite worrying. 
uh, because a lot of people who are engaged in exercise for years, uh, this is especially true for endurance runners, the people who like to run long distances, and even people engaged in any type of exercise, as you get older, there's an increased tendency for atrial fibrillation. Atrial fibrillation is an abnormal heart rhythm involving the upper chambers of the heart called the atrium. Uh, and the, uh, the big problem with uh, uh, atrial fibrillation is that the, uh, you can tend to develop a blood clot in, in the heart, which can leave the heart, travel to the brain, and cause a stroke. And those who have atrial fibrillation that's not controlled have a five times greater risk of having a stroke because of atrial fibrillation. Uh, and this study that showed fish oil increases the risk of atrial fibrillation by 33% was quite troubling. Now, I myself, I had an episode of atrial fibrillation a while back. I had to go to the emergency room. Uh, by I don't think my instance, what I had was called proximal atrial fibrillation, and uh, it meaning it only occurs once, you know, it's not a regular thing, it's not a chronic condition, but it was enough to uh, put me in the uh, emergency room, I was there for about three hours, I came out of it okay, uh, and uh, you know, now I have to take medication to control blood clotting, to prevent, you know, they, I mean, I, I haven't had any episodes that I know of since that emergency room visit, but I take this uh, this anti-clotting medication as a precaution, just in case. Uh, and as far as fish oil, I've always used fish oil supplements. I always took a good amount of it because of this, you know, systemic inflammation effect. However, because of this new information, I reduced my uh, intake of omega-3 or specifically fish oil. I was taking something like, uh, and I, let me see, what was I averaging? I was averaging about seven grams a day of fish oil and I cut it back now. Now I'm taking two grams a day, which is definitely enough to get the benefits of fish oil. Yeah, maybe not as much anti-inflammatory effect, but I don't want to take the risk of, uh, of uh, you know, stimulating any atrial fibrillation effect. So I just thought I'd throw that in. But generally speaking, omega-3 fatty acids are very, very healthy. And, uh, you know, if you don't want to take any fish oil, all you have to do is eat this fatty fish uh, sources that I mentioned two to three times a week. You won't need any fish oil supplements at all. And uh, there's no association, by the way, of uh, consuming fatty fish with atrial fibrillation. They have not found any any link whatsoever. It's only concentrated fish oil supplements, probably because you're taking in concentrated amounts of, uh, of the omega-3 fatty acids, uh, DHA and EPA. So that's about it for this video. Um, uh, as I said, uh, coming up in my Applied Metabolics, I will have an article on the, the uh, truth about omega-6 fatty acids, just how bad are they, uh, how good are they, a, couple of, a lot of things that most people don't know about omega-6, including a lot of so-called experts who have not talked about this. This is only going to be in uh, Applied Metabolics. Along with that, I, I regularly have articles on nutrition, exercise science, anti-aging research, ergogenic aids, effective fat loss techniques, hormonal therapy, supplement science, which ones work, which ones don't, uh, women's health and fitness. All of this is contained in Applied Metabolics. Uh, it contains, uh, I cover more topics than any other digital uh, publication. It's 30 to 45 pages every month, no ads, 100% truth, and it's the only publication on the internet that includes my over 60 years of, of constant study and experience that really can't be matched by anyone. In this publication, I, I, I tell you all the mistakes that I made along the way in my training and nutrition program so you don't have to make those same mistakes. This type of advice is absolutely invaluable. You can't put a price on it because it saves you a lot of time and stress. So subscribe today, www.appliedmetabolics.com. Uh, when, uh, when you subscribe, send me an email, and I'll send you an invitation to join my private Applied Metabolics fake, Facebook page. Uh, you know, I almost said fake book. I almost said fake book page. And I guess that's a, what do they call that? A, a, a subliminal a, a thought or something like that? Because I, I guess I look at Facebook as fake book. Anyway, 
uh, you send me an email. I'll send you an invitation to join my private uh, Facebook, Applied Metabolics Facebook page, where each day I post, new, I post new information on nutrition, exercise, and general medicine and health. I have an email portal on my Applied Metabolics website where current subscribers only can send me uh, short uh, messages or emails uh, about anything they might have read in Applied Metabolics or anything related to nutrition and health. And I will answer them as an appreciation of their subscription to Applied Metabolics. Of course, this only applies to current subscribers. I don't answer unsolicited questions because um, I only have a certain amount of time, you know. Uh, you know, uh, besides which, uh, anyway, uh, anyway, I also want to point out another thing that occurred to me today is the fact that a lot of these other digital publications, not only do they charge th more, three times as much as Applied Metabolics or even more than that, there's one publication that I know of that charges, are you, ready? you won't believe this, they charge $275 a month. Now that is a lot of money. Uh, uh, applied Metabolics is not expensive at all. Uh, a cup of latte at Starbucks costs more money than a, mo than a month of, of uh, Applied Metabolics. And unlike a lot of these other publications, I've had my Applied Metabolics for about eight years now. I've never raised the cost of the prescription. Uh, it's, well, there's another another slip. Prescription, because it's almost like getting a prescription applied medical. What I meant to say was subscription. I've never raised the, the price of my subscription, even though everything around me, and I'm sure this affected you too, everything has gone up in price, including my costs of producing this, this publication. Everything has gone up in price, and yet I've kept the price low. I'm hoping to be able to do that. I don't know what's going to happen in the future. I mean, if things continue to rise, eventually I might have to, I, I might have no choice. But right now, the subscription price of Applied Metabolics is the same as it was when I started it eight years ago. Uh, so subscribe today again, www.appliedmetabolics.com. Uh, and what, what else can I say? If you find these videos uh, of use or educational, please let others know about it because there's just too much bullshit on the internet and too much crap on, on a lot of these so-called educational YouTube videos. You want to, you know, people should be listening to videos that give them honest information with no ulterior uh, motives, nothing. I mean, I don't know about you, I hate these videos where the guy starts to get, or a woman, a man and woman starts to give information, then midway through the uh, the uh, video, they give, they're throwing an ad at you. Oh, buy this product at so-and-so website, mention me and you'll get 10% off. I hate that. To me, that's like watching an infomercial. And, and those those videos lack credibility because I look at them as shills for the company that they're pushing. They're nothing more than shills. I, I don't even believe the information in those videos. That's me. You're welcome to believe what you want. But you'll notice I didn't mention any products in this video. The only thing I mention is my Applied Metabolics publication because I think it's extremely useful and it will be very helpful to a lot of people. So that's about it. If you want to have the best fun you'll ever have, go to your local. I, there's another. Go, go to your local shelter. I got to get the marbles out of my mouth. Go to your local shelter and adopt a dog. Thanks for listening.